Hello and welcome back to the Reapers with me Tanky. Now today I'm going to review something a little different for us, the Elegu Mars 2 Pro 3D printer. Now the generous people over at Elegu have sent this over for the purpose of review, but I've not been asked to give any favourable comments by them and everything here is my own honest opinion. How did we get to this point? Well here I was thinking my colleague Skill has done some amazing work with the Authenticate team and the world of 3D printing parts for sim pits and HOTAS controls is picking up quite fast. So I thought, let's see how this will turn out. And being a complete novice at this, so after doing a bit of research, I found that Elegoo makes some of the best and easiest 3D MLSA printers out there. Obligatory safety warning, when doing anything with resin, ensure you're wearing gloves and working in a well-ventilated area. So I reached out to the team and they graciously agreed to send me this lovely Mars 2 Pro with a 500 gram bottle of their water washable green resin. And their communication with me has always been really quick and friendly and extremely helpful. And shipping was really fast for me. And the only delay was the fact that I was on holiday with my family. So when I got home, I opened up the box to find an extremely well packed and protected setup, which you can see in many unboxing videos on YouTube. So I won't go and cover that here. Needless to say, I am very impressed. Well done, Elegoo. And this printer is also very solidly made with an all metal case. Now, the machine itself is compact, measuring only 20 centimeters in width and depth and 42 centimeters in height. And as you can see, that fits quite nicely onto the corner of this standard IKEA desk. The build volume of the plate is 14 centimeters in length, nine centimeters in depth, and with a build height of 14.6 centimeters. And this is great for printing 28 millimeter miniatures and small busts. But I did have to get creative and learn some new skills when it came to printing out the spay grip from the Mark 1 Spitfire kit by splitting the STL file and then resin welding the two parts back together. But it works very well. It also comes with a set of Allen keys. And these are for putting, uh, making adjustments to the build plate itself when it comes to leveling and changing out the FEP plastic sheet at the bottom of the resin tank. A metal scraper to help get the prints off the build plate and a plastic scraper for use on the FEP sheet. A set of side cutters to help with the removal of printed supports and an angle bracket for the build plate to help drain off any resin after printing. A small brush to help with the cleanup when you get to wash the prints and you also get paint strainers which you will use when putting resin back into the bottle and a few pairs of disposable gloves, which unfortunately I've used up, so I can't show them here for you. And a nice manual that takes you through the uh, first time setup and plate levering process. Although the English in this manual isn't fantastic, but you do get the idea of what you need to do. And there are plenty of videos out there of how to actually level the print bed as well. It also comes with a USB stick that holds the config files for the printer to work like the g-code and also a couple of the rook test prints at the bottom of the uh, machine here we have a usb a port for use with the supplied usb stick and this is handy as it allows for quick access to move from your computer to the printer and um, when you you want to print stuff out but uh, I'm actually using a long USB extension cable so I can quickly move the files from my computer to the printer before I go and actually set that up to print. <clears throat> now I have spoken to Elegoo and asked if there would be an option to fit uh, an ethernet port which would allow for network connectivity. And I've been told that the engineers are working on that solution and that's a, a fantastic idea. The controls for this are all via touch screen on the front and this is split into three areas, tools, systems, and print. Inside the tool area, you will find all the settings for leveling the print bed, uh, to setting the light levels, and also cleaning the FEP sheet in case of failed prints. If you go into system, you will see how you can calibrate the touch screen, change the language, and show the firmware, and also how to contact support in case anything goes wrong.
And then we have the print area, uh, which will show you uh, handy little screenshots of the print and the name. And all you need to do is once it's selected is press the little play symbol and the machine will start the printing process. Then we have the monochrome LCD screen, which for which allows for quicker, crisper printing. And on top of this, we then have the resin bath, which uh, has this handy little fill line, so you don't overfill it with resin, and that will cause an almighty mess as it went over the uh, the top as well as a handy little notch here that will help you when you uh, empty the resin when you're finished back into the uh, the resin bottle this is secured in place with, by the two screws on top and getting the alignment right can be a little bit tricky but you do have these two indents here and you that will help you locate in but uh, they have made a change on the Saturn and the Mars 3 with a couple of little lugs which will help you locate the resin tank perfectly in place. We then cover the uh, the screw here, which uh, has a nice smooth movement and it allows for really precise accuracy uh, when you're uh, setting the, the print height on this. Behind this, we have a built-in carbon filter uh, to help get rid of any unpleasant resin smell. Uh, but if you want to change the filter out you will need to strip the printer down so it's not really a user serviceable part but that being said elegoo do have these handy little portable filters and you can easily change the filter on those and then connected to this we have the removable build plate which is attached to the screw via this large screw at the top here and is leveled thanks to these two allen keys on the base and what we'll do here is just quickly show you how the adapter goes on to allow you to actually drain any excess resin off the actual build plate like this into the the bath again. The actual build plate space itself is sandblasted to aid in layer adhesion and that works really well but I've added a magnetic flex plate on here which helps getting the finished prints off a whole lot easier. And then finally we have this uh, rubber red cover uh, which helps keep out the UV lights and keeps the resin fumes in with the help of this ru rubber gasket. Now I've seen a few people complain about the rubber gasket and I have attached it to the base with a couple of drops of super glue and it hasn't caused me any issues but people were saying it would fall off when lifting the cover off and going to the resin. So I thought better safe than sorry. You must also remember that you don't want to be printing in direct sunlight as that will start to cure the resin in the tank, even with the cover on. So now we've covered the machine, but the machine isn't complete without the slicing software. And the Elegoo machines use Cheeto Box. And this is a bit of free software and is very simple to use. If, uh, if you can find the STL file you want to print and it will add supports for you as also detect any areas where the print might have problems and whilst it is good it's not perfect so you might have to go in there and add extra supports for the model but that's okay and in Cheeto box is where you will see all the settings for the print file like the speed at which the print bread rises the layer height of each layer etc etc now the standard settings are very good and I printed the test print rooks using them and it only took around about an hour and a half 
to print out in the washable green resin and it turns out great and you can as you can see here the details are nice crisp and sharp I then decided to do the T800 head from Terminator and this took around about eight hours to complete and although I did have this running over at night I failed to make sure that there was enough resin in the bath and so the top was uh, failed here and that was completely my fault not the machine but once again you can see the quality is fantastic with this in between running off prints I was researching the best settings for the resins in the printer and I came across Uncle Jesse on YouTube and his advice has been golden and he would even show you his print settings for all of the machines he has which does include the Mars 2 Pro so armed with this information and a couple of mad ideas from his videos I went off and printed this Deadpool bust now you can see all the uh, the details really pop out nice and crisply uh, with these printer settings that from Uncle Jesse on Deadpool and uh, the finish on it is absolutely fantastic uh, it's, it's the sort of thing that you'd expect to be uh, purchasing from a reputable company and uh, yeah, I'm really happy with that and another T800 head now Deadpool completed in a mere seven hours and the T800 head was six hours now with the T800 head I did uh, add in a red resin to the green resin and then you can see where they've changed up here so I that leads me to believe that they do have different densities but it does lead to a nice transition now I had a couple of prints under my belt I thought this is time to do what I intended to do with the printer in the first place and print the Spitfire grip so after splitting the grips STL using Blender which you can find very handy tutorials on YouTube on how to do that I set it all up to print and the bottom and the top parts of the spade grip took round about four hours and they came out nice and clean but then I had to join the two parts together once again I go to Uncle Jesse and followed his guide on making a, a resin weld and it works pretty much the same as you would with a metal weld except it's cured with a UV torch and it works great although I did make a, a slight mess with resin runs but that can easily be sanded out and tidied up all in all I have to say my experience with this setup has been great I did go out and buy extra bits to make my life a little bit easier like this wash and cure station and plenty of isopropyl alcohol and I guess if I had to change one thing it would be the build volume of the machine but Elegoo do have that covered with the likes of the uh, Elegoo Saturn which is a build volume around about twice that of the Mars and a 4k mono screen and I've been reliably informed about an upcoming machine the Jupiter which has the build volume three times the size of the Saturn and a 6k screen which if you get in early will be going on sale at around about $600 which is 50% off the regular price pricing as of early September 2021 for the Mars 2 Pro is $259.99 plus shipping direct from Elegoo but this doesn't come with any resin so you would, would need to get that extra and I've got my resin from Amazon for around about £30 per 1000 grams so in conclusion I would have to say that once I got my head around all the various processes this has been and continues to be a true pleasure to use and although my wife is getting fed up with the amount of stuff I'm printing out I still continue it, it's lovely and easy and if this this is where you dip your toe in to the 3d printing world this is a great place for you to start off so well done Elegoo for making a very clear and easy process I've been Tanky for the Grim Reapers and for a change I look forward to seeing what you've made with your own 3d printers very very soon